Hello everyone, welcome back to the Humility and Unapologetic Podcast. And today's episode is Facing Reality with John Henry. He's a good friend of mine and a Navy vet, and we're going to be talk- speaking on topics such as women of color with injustice in America, such as Mrs. Breonna Taylor. All right, well, thank you for having me. I appreciate being here. Uh, I've been looking forward to doing this for a minute. So, Always a pleasure, uh, pleasure. But uh, yeah, to the show. thank you, mm-hmm. thank you, thank you. Um, well, Breonna Taylor, her, her, her whole situation that went with her was something that's been overlooked. It's been happening and it's been going on for quite a while with other black women that, oh, yeah. that hadn't been really exposed to this yet. You know, it's, we know about her and we know about Sandra and we know about them because they made big media. Some mm-hmm. of them made big media and they got swept under the rug, you yeah. know, and I think all of them need to be, you know, recognized. It's, it's, it's just not we worry about our black men out there. We got to worry about our black women as well. I mean, I, I, I'm a father of three, two girls, one boy. You know, I worry just as hard about that boy as I do them girls now because they're not safe from social injustice either. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Ever since when George Floyd got died, when he got killed, a lot of people stopped talking about Rihanna Taylor, and we everybody forgot about her completely. Everybody would focus on the media tried to stir some up. You know, they Drew thing got put out there, and everybody just complete. Oh, you know, oh Drew this, but. Nobody's serving her justice. Why is she not getting justice as like George Floyd? And I'm not taking away because he deserves his justice. It was on camera. Right. That's why his is more. Yeah. What everybody's saying about mm-hmm. his is he's more because everybody saw across the nation. Yeah, the whole world saw. Yeah. And Breonna Taylor, it just like it, it just hurt. Her. Yeah. And uh, you know, because hers, like you said, it happened on March 13th, like months prior to George mm-hmm. Floyd, but you didn't really, it didn't get big media. It yeah. didn't get blew up until, you know, people kind of went back later on and dug it up and kind of like, uh, you know, paid more attention to yeah. the injustice that was going on in America, you know, as far as facing black lives and stuff the like that. The fact that she got shot eight times, well, they, they did 20 shots, but she got shot eight times. And they, and she was, uh, they tried to frame her boyfriend for it, but it was the cops. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. And I, I know as you said, you could use a father of three. All right. And uh, two girls. Two girls and a boy. Yeah. yeah. So, so how, how does that kind of affect your household when you see things like that in the media? Well, my, my two girls, they are they don't stay with me. Mm-hmm. They, they're, they're off doing their, their thing, shall I say. But um, yeah, I, I worry at night, you know, but I can't be consumed and be like, oh, because I never get no sleep or nothing else. But I worry about them. I worry about them going out, who they with. You know, I don't want to be clutchy parent that yeah. just hugs them and I can't let you go nowhere but I gotta at the same time it's the world we're living in it, it, it's hard it's really hard to find a balance in between that now uh the the, the the my son he's he's different he's right there for right now mm-hmm. but here in the next month or so he's going off to college you know so he's gonna be on his own to a certain extent but he's gonna be out there more so in the world where you know I I see him every night just mm-hmm. about. Now it's going to be a point when he starts football camp, I won't see him for at least a month or better. Yeah. And he's out there on, in, in this crazy world, you know, and he was one of them children that he, he really believed and, you know, he believed in law enforcement. He believed that everything was good. Now this is sort of like a awakening for him. Mm-hmm. Even though he was taught in school, this is the first time he gets to see it up front and see what's really going on. So, yeah, it's, as a parent, it's, it's, it, it, it's, it's terrifying. Yeah, because uh, Rihanna being at the age of 26 when she got killed, that's close to the age yeah. of uh, your daughter. Uh, my right? oldest girl, yeah. 26. You know, yeah. And she's down there in Memphis, so close enough to it. So, I mean, you know, mm-hmm. she's at the zoo right now. I, I, I saw her and mom talking, and I'm sitting there, like, cringing, like, why are you at the zoo? You know, it's, I'm scared for you. I'm scared that you're going to get pulled over and get mm-hmm. profiled because you're black. Yeah. You know, it's too much going on. Yeah, but with the world being how it is, you know, and then the reaction that you see protesting the looting and riot, how you feel about that? Well, the, 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 the protesting I'm with and the rioting, I get to a certain extent mm-hmm. because, um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm going to take a Tupac, but he said it, and, and, and it's true what he was saying. You know, he, I, I read a book he wrote, and, uh, he was talking about how uh, a guy was hungry and kept walking past this restaurant with him, throwing food away. But he came to the restaurant like, please, sir, I'm hungry. Can I get something to eat? Yeah. Man, run him off. But we, we go several days with this. Mm-hmm. Now he's at the point, he ain't asking no more. He going to buzz up in there and get what he wants because yeah. he tried to ask. You told him no. Now he's going to take. That's where his riot and his went. So, you know, I get it. No, it's not right. But people are tired. The generation now is not getting it. They're, they're tired. of. We tried it back in the 60s. Let's go all the way back to the 
slavery and mm -hmm. above. I mean, my dad grew up in, in the, he was born in the 20s and he was used to tell me road stories. Born right here in New Augusta, Mississippi. He would tell me stories of how mm -hmm. they used to walk the train tracks to Hattiesburg to get chased by the Klan all the way back. And there was no law, you know, it was no, yeah, no because you, right, back, you know. it was nothing to protect it. And then, you know, uh, even in Chicago, when gangs really first started, we had the, uh, where they're known as P-Stone here, but there were Blackstone Rangers in Chicago. And their whole thing was to protect the black neighborhood from police. I mean, because they were getting beat then. We didn't have cameras. I mean, who's the first camera guy? Um, it's 1826. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The first photographer. But I, no, I mean, so far, the first guy who recorded a beating, oh, Rodney King. Yeah, yeah Rodney, Rodney King. King. Now, yeah. Rodney King opened it up for the world. Hey, this, but that didn't start on that incident. That had been going on forever. Yeah. You know, it was just caught on camera. Now, Documented. Mm -hmm. These yeah. days, you can go on YouTube and find videos of police doing whatever to anybody. It's does. almost countless that you see, you know, you go on YouTube or go on the internet and you see someone of color getting harassed, mm -hmm. beaten, mm -hmm. taken advantage of and stuff like that. But like you say, it's all most of the time people get out in the street and protest and mm -hmm. stuff like that when it's a black male. Mm -hmm. Not taken away from it. Not not that it's separate because wrong is wrong. Sure. But the women, they seem like they don't get much recognition like I, I uh, 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 Tatiana Jefferson. Yes. Yeah, I have, I have problems saying the name. Too. But I do too. like just that whole case, you know, how they just kind of came and gunned her down like, right. in her house. Like she, she wasn't bothering anybody. And like you said, with your daughters going out in society, it seems like most of the time society comes to the women. Yeah. They're at home doing nothing, nothing. absolutely nothing. You know what I mean? And then they end up getting killed and no justice is done. Uh -huh. So. So I kind of get the rioting and then the looters, you know, those are people there like, but I see on, I saw on CNN where some people plan and that's what they plan to kind of mm. come and loot yeah. and cause a disturbance yeah. amongst the peaceful protesters. Yeah. And stuff right. Like that. right. Yeah, I heard it's, it's really police officers that start the looting. Yeah. And that's what I heard. Um, I think one woman called her husband out because he started it. And matter of fact, I don't know what city it was. Maybe it was in Minnesota, Minneapolis, when the police officer, he was giving, hey, I'm yeah, like, oh, I saw he that. He knocked at the target. Yeah, yeah, I was on. Yeah, I was yeah. on. But you would never know he was a cop until his, his girlfriend, like, hey, I know who that is. Mm -hmm. That's my boyfriend. Yeah, go get him. Wow. Yeah. But, yeah. like, well, how I feel about protests, I, I keep keep going because, you know, it's, it's starting because if, it, if it's, it's affecting us, it's affecting everybody. Right. Everybody's starting to protest. You and you and who in the million thought that, you know, France and all these other other countries are protesting because they're like, man, this is this is not right. This is not, this is why why are these people getting killed by the police officer? Mm -hmm. They they may not be bad in other countries, but they bad in, in the United States. Yeah. I'm I'm glad you said I'm sorry, but he, he brought a good point up. See, I've been to other other countries mm -hmm. through the Navy and uh in particular I went to Portsmouth, England. The countries overseas some of them are good, and some of them are just as racist as yeah. we are right here. I mean, overseas, in the, when we was in England, just because the women there preferred a, a dark-skinned man, they don't have a lot of us over there. Mm -hmm. So when we come in on, on a Navy ship, you're talking 5,000 people, and maybe 2,000 of them might be black. So we go into the city, and they come to us, and you know, they're infatuated how we talk, how we walk, what we do. And you know, they was over there, the white men over there were calling us monkeys. Like, don't be with them monkeys. They don't grow a tail and this and they, I mean, we got in the cab and they, yeah, he talked his noise till we got to where we went. And I really can't say all the other stuff that happened, <laughs> but we let him have it when we got out that cab. You know, we're like, no, we don't appreciate that. We're men just like you. Right, we, right. we deserve and we will get treated the same. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm glad that this has went global. Mm -hmm. So everybody sees, but you know, like I said, them countries overseas are, some of them are the same way, just yeah. like here about us. And one, one other thing I kind of wanted to touch on with, you know, you being on both sides of the bridge as far as Pill and Hattiesburg, mm -hmm. Have, have you like noticed or see any significant change? I think that there will be change in Pivotal with like removing the current mayor of that city. Oh, oh, yeah. I, yeah. I don't know. Right now he's stubborn. He don't want to go. I, you know, and it's just not the, the black folks or what they wanted him out before this. This yeah. is just like more of icing on the cake to push him out the door. Will he get out? Probably not. I mean, I'm hoping that he will resign or we find a way to cut his wages yeah. to get him out of there. Yeah. But, you know, and then we get, even when that happens, uh, Petal is a racist city to a certain extent. Yeah. Everybody in Petal is not like that. Yeah. I have white friends. 
I had black friends, and I got friends in Pedro that are white. Mm -hmm. And but you know, it's what Pedro was raised on, was based on. My dad was a bus driver in Pedro back in for Pace Head Start back in uh, the, the early eighties. He got pulled over in Pedro for doing one mile over the speed limit. One mile, and, one on mile. the school bus. That's ridiculous. And uh, if he would have had children on that bus who drive for Pace Head Start, he would have went to jail. Yeah. yeah. And mm -hmm. you know that that's that's crazy in itself. And Pedro has always been like that. Pedro, when I was growing up, that's the place you didn't want to go. Yeah. yeah. I you heard, know? Heard it, 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 it's, it has got better. I mean, yeah, I moved straight there, and I, I hadn't really had you know too much. I do have neighbors that don't associate with me because of my color of skin, mm -hmm. you know, but uh, that's on both sides. I, mean, I got some Africans staying out of the streets that don't associate with nobody, but, yeah. you know, it is, it is what it is. But one of the things about protesting that I like is that I'm seeing right now is that you see more white people with the Black mm -hmm. Lives Matter. I love that. that. You know, so that, therefore, that, that gives me somewhat hope. I'm going to tell you why, though. Oh, because of COVID-19, it had forced people in the house. Now people are seeing it because, you know, when you go to work, you don't really see see the news all the time. You know, you no. know. So, you know, we, we, we were supposed to be quarantined. Yeah. Most of them so are you quarantined. You're in this little boat. Yeah. yeah. So now you're, on, now you're on TV and social media. Now you see it. Mm -hmm. So now everybody's like, oh, man, this, that's not right. Yeah. Black lives do matter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, right. I, if our lives matter, why can't black people yeah, matter? Well, so, all lives matter. Black lives have to matter. So, it, Certain people they're getting that now. Yeah, a lot of people getting it. A lot of people are, are trying to see. A lot of people they try to twist it and like it was a hate group. Like, oh, okay, what makes them different than the KKK or whatever? But now they're seeing they're actually uh, peaceful people mm -hmm. and, and they're asking for change. But now it's to the point we're not asking. Like you said, right. you gave that analysis, and I've seen so many not asking anymore. We'll take it. We won't change. Yeah, yeah that's where the riot comes from. That's right. right. And you know, there's nothing wrong with Rodney because you know, you got to make a point. Because I think Martin Luther King said uh, about oppression like, people can be oppressed for so long until they, they start to make action. Yeah. So now we are starting to do stuff because it's time. Yeah. You know, so um, how, how is this affecting everyone, y'all think? Like, around, well, you see all the news feeds around the globe from mm -hmm. Mexico to um, South Korea, yeah. like you said, France, London. You know, and then all Africa, Africa yeah. all over the country and stuff like that. Like it's a protest right now in Jackson. Yeah, yeah. You, know, you know, and it's Hasbro like, starting making little yeah. little protests. I seen they did one yesterday. So everybody is starting to everybody starting to protest because everybody like, okay, this ain't this ain't right. Yeah. But I, I hate that it, it, it took so many years for this to come like this. I mean, really, we've been fighting for this for forever since. I mean, this was what the Civil Rights March and all that was based on. This right here. I mean, mm -hmm. but I, I, I'm glad that it's finally, you know. So the generation behind you and behind don't have to. Cause they're not studying racism. Mm -hmm. Racism is not born. It's taught. Yeah, I've never seen a black baby and white baby come out. And the black baby look at the white baby. The white baby turns his head. I don't. Know. And yeah, it's it, taught. It, it comes from home. <laughs> yeah, right. And, you know, like, oh, you know, yeah. a, a, a lot of the older white folks, I hate to say it, but they're dying off and they're not teaching mm -hmm. them. You know, for the ones, the knuckleheads that drilled into their children, you know, all that's getting erased. Now, I'm so glad that we're going to get to a point to where we can really see Martin Luther King's dream become true I know, all right. the way around without no, you know, it's good over here, but it's bad over there. Yeah, that's wonderful. Like, because us being from the South and from Mississippi, where they have a strong heritage of hatred. Oh, man. You know, for one yeah. color and segregation laws and so on and so forth is countless things that happen in this state. But to see some type of change in progress, man, it, it, it warms my soul. It does. And I'm glad that I'm still alive and able to see yeah. that yeah. Yes. change. You know, I know it's a slow process, but I, I do believe eventually, yeah. eventually yeah. it get there. Yeah. And, and I may not see it, the, the complete change in my lifetime, but I see the effectiveness of our youth, yeah. the, the effect that it has on our youth. And you got really kids on the streets, streets. Protesting. Yes, yeah. yes. You got young kids. Yeah, that, that's great. I, I love it. <laughs> no, yeah. just, I think mean, a little black girl, she, no just no peace. She keeps screaming it because she, like, she's like, it's not, it's not cool. Mm -hmm. So, and you like, know, like you said, the younger generation, now these little kids, you can't hide from kids no more. Right. If they, if you, if you watch news, they're going to see it. So, I mean, I, I advise people to tell their kids mm -hmm. what's going on. Don't, don't have them don't shelter. Don't mm -hmm. right. go and tell them, hey, you got fire girl? Hey, listen, baby, listen, son. This was going on. This is how they treat us. So they would know. But you know, you don't want to be a hatred towards policemen. 
Right. But you, but you still yeah. want them to, to know that, hey, they're not looking out for you. Yeah, and see, that's why we got to change the culture. And that's what I think that these protests and, mm-hmm. and like I said, Recipe, George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, all those that passed uh, recently. But now it's bringing the focal point onto the po- how police police black, uh, black communities and yes, black yeah. people in general, no, no matter if you're rich or poor, you know, mm-hmm. and like I say, being from Mississippi, you it's not just in the streets, but it's also in the workplace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. you know. So you want to speak on that, like job discrimination? Wow, I mean, hey, I get to stay another three hours talking about job discrimination. <laughs> I mean, you know, it, it, it's. I mean, you can go and you can fuss about it at your job, but when the person who's giving you the the, the 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 grief and the person above him is no better, you know, they all in cahoots. I mean, it's no way out, and I hate to say that, you know, until we get a change globally. I mean, well, yeah, I can say globally here in Mississippi or across or across the world that it won't be tolerated, right? And have something that governs that. That hey, if I'm on my job and I'm getting racially discriminated against, I it's somebody I can go to. That can make something happen. Cause I mean, if you racially, if you being discriminated at your job, you go to your HR woman, mm-hmm. and she, undercoverly, is just as racist as the guy there. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. you know, they, oh, we gonna get on it, and then you know, you sitting there waiting for you know you fired, <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> and really you were just trying to get some type of you know understanding, some type of help. Hey, I I I think I'm being treated unfairly. Yeah, you have uh with. There yeah, type of job discrimination. Yeah, yeah I got fired. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I got fired one time, man. It was. Um, I was working at Dollar General, and they got they basically recruited me to work there. Went to Dollar, went to Dollar General, had a black store manager. You know, he was like, "Man, I believe in you. You know, I, I, you know, I want, I, I feel like you, you can be a great, great store manager." I was like, "Okay, cool." So I, you know, I went there, and it was a lady. I don't, I don't know what was her race, but I just know she hated me. Like, she hated me so much. That she will nitpick what I do. She will she will be nice to all the women. She will be nice to hey how y'all doing, you know. But she will anytime I do something, she'll go on the camera and just see what I'm doing. And and I'm pointing, and I was telling, I was like, man, I feel like she's gonna fire me. And he was like, why you think that? I said, she don't like me, and she don't respect my. I mean, because everybody loves me. Every, when customers came in, they look for me. You know, they would jump around. You know, the employees love me. Everybody loved me. He. Start to change because she he was on her he, she was he she was on his head. You know what I'm Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. He was like she was, and then um, he was like, "Man, you need to do better." I was like, "Man, I'm trying to, but we get we busy. And how can I be better by doing certain things when we, when I comes to have to help somebody else out?" Mm-hmm. So it was like we saw you on camera doing this. You like wasn't doing nothing. So she was nitpicking. Then I came in on Saturday and fired. And me, I was angry because I'm like, dude, you got, I went, I left one job to come to you and I thought you had my back. Right. But you fired me. He's, and, and this is the one line, this is the one line he, he like, I knew he like, he said, he was like, um, she didn't have nothing to do with it. That's why I knew he, she, she, yeah, she, 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 she was, she was, she But the bad thing about it, well, I talked to one of my old coworkers months later, they said she quit. He left, he left that store yeah. and she quit because she said she couldn't help me. And that's normally how it happens. It sure does. Yeah, truth be told, man. He yeah. felt guilty because he, because he, when I, when I told him, I was like, man, I said, man, it's all good. He was like, Fred, why, why would you say that? I was like, it's all good, man. I understand what you're doing. Mm-hmm. It's, but it's all good. Don't I'm find my way out. He was like, he, he, he was like, oh my God. Was like, he really said that. I, I, I thought he was going to cry or something. I'm like, no, but it's all good. He just, mm-hmm. It messed him up though. He was like, man, I didn't expect him to like, to be good, but I'm yeah. like, that's all good, because I knew it was coming. Because yeah. I told, I was like, man, I, I eventually, I either I'm gonna, I'm gonna get fired, or I'm gonna get, or I'm gonna quit. I'm gonna quit, yeah. so I got fired. But like I told him, it's all good. He tried to contact me, but I was like, I ain't gonna talk to you. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm a little sorry because man, you, you let that woman really get me out of there. But, yeah, but that, that, that's out. that's that's just you know discrimination goes on at, at the workplace. More places than anywhere. Yeah. That's, that's you know you get mm-hmm. profiled there more places than anywhere. And a lot of employees, they don't come forward because of fear. Mm-hmm. Because they feel like once they come forward and speak up or voice voice how they feel or how they how they're being treated, then comes the, the backlash. The target on their yeah, back. yeah, the target right. on their back, like you know the bullying and stuff. Mm-hmm. But I say, man, this twenty twenty, get all that. 
if, if, if God closed that door, he'll open up another. Oh, yeah. So, so we have to believe and let fear get it out the way. Yeah. And if you've been mistreated, misjudged, you go to the person, you know, it's a chain of command, just like in the, uh, the military. In the military. Correct, correct. You know, you go to the person and talk. They don't want to hear it. If they got that same mentality, you know, mm -hmm. you go above their head, you go above their head. And if they fire you, then good. I hope you get paid for it, you yeah. know. Yeah, so, I mean, so there's ways to, to, to tackle job discrimination. You have any stories about job discrimination? Oh, yeah. I got a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> said, we'll be here three hours with me talking about job discrimination. But, you know, just for the viewers and the listeners, man, it's time not to be, a, for, for, be afraid and get all that. This ain't, this ain't the old days where you got an overseer. Uh, as they call a boss, because most of them ain't got enough money to afford you. So they can't be your boss. A boss is someone who owns things and pays employees. So they're not your boss. They're supervisor. And that's another thing. They'll take the title and run yeah, with it. Yeah. No, you just got put in that position because of who you know most of the time, yeah, right. uh, who you are most of the time. But not because you work there, because if you knew how to talk to people, you'll have a better crew. Yeah, have a better position. Uh, yeah, a better <laughs> yeah. workplace, a better position. But yeah. you know, you just you just a regular, just like I am. You know, so that's that's my take on job discrimination. You know, and my dad would say back in the day, that's the uh, what they call it, the, the, the good old boy theory. Yeah. yeah, the good old boy. So they're gonna put you in there, and then you mm -hmm. know that's how it works, and that's how you. And the rest of them, that's how they move up because it's all, you know, we're going to keep it white. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So it's so it's a video surfacing around right now with a guy named Byron F. Wilson mm -hmm. and the Wilson Academy. You had a chance to check that out? Yeah, I thought it was outstanding. The, the brother gave some, some good knowledge on, on how to uh, how we can turn this thing around and, and, and actually hit them where it hurts to make them listen to us without having to go and you know, ride violent and all yeah, that. Yeah, riding, mm -hmm. he, he said it's a better way of doing it. Because what well, I, I learned about it when white people you got him in their pockets. And that's what he was speaking on. <laughs> got well, him. America in general. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not just white people, you know. Because the, the enemy, I don't want to say the government, but the people who are not out for our best interests, mm -hmm. who, you know, because you got black people on the police force. You do. That treat other black people just as worse. Or worse. Yeah. They're the worst ones. Fire Hill Wilson, he kind of give you like a layout, a plan. Of uh, after the riots and the protests and the looting, like it wasn't that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you say you checked him out. Yeah, I checked him out, and he he, he gave on the you know how, how to just support black businesses. That's a a good step for us. You know, we he's laid it out, and I'm not gonna tell everything because I want y'all to go see the video. I encourage everybody to see the video yeah. because it's very. I mean, if you listen to him and try to follow it, I believe we can make a serious change. Or around the United States. Yeah, and we'll put the link in this uh, this episode so that you can go and view it for yourself. But we're just going to kind of touch on some key points that he brought yeah. up. And one of them was about black businesses and how the Jewish, he compared it to the Jewish community, how they stayed in the network. They kind of policed their own at the same time, but they got their businesses running. And, you know, you get businesses and, and you start to grow capital in your businesses so they can pretty much, you know, they're into bigger things than most black um, mm -hmm. black businesses. You know, they, they're into the executive levels of, of things because of how they structure their community. Mm -hmm. And that's saying, and you know, they can get things done because like I said, the trail leads all the way up to the top of them. They started at the bottom, but they branded and kept going, going to, for us, you know, we're a little different. We always try to do things the hard way, but mm -hmm. that that's what, you know, we, we need to start doing, follow their footsteps. They, they laid a platform for us. We can follow it and we can have the same type of pull and everything in higher places than yeah. just like them. That's right. As he said, that they can offer consequences and we, mm -hmm. as black people, offer no consequences. Mm -hmm. Like, if you mess with one of theirs, it's a consequence. Yeah. They can pull their dollars that they give to, to a certain community or certain things, certain businesses, they can pull those dollars back and it will, it will affect that business. Immediately, yeah. But us, you, you, you deal with one of us, we go out, we, we protest, we ride, and then that's that. But what's after that? You know, so like John Henry said, you got to go ahead, you got to spend, like he said, that America doesn't care about black people, mm -hmm. but they care about, the, what they care about is black dollars. Yes, yeah. our dollars matter. Yeah, so you have to spend your dollars wisely. Like like a few restaurants right here in uh, Hattiesburg that you can shop with, because he said, he said most of uh, blacks, in America, 
eat out fast food. Mm -hmm. Like like they make up for billions of dollars each year in fast food. They do. So why not take that money and spend with the black and keep it in the black communities? Mm -hmm. And in Hattiesburg, I got a list of names that you can shop with and that Cornette Chicken, that's Michael Sanders. You got Twilly Philly. That's you want, in the city. Yeah, if you want some subs. Mm -hmm. Off the Bone Barbecue. Oh, yeah. You know, instead of running the streets and roses all the time, go shop with Off the Bone Barbecue. Uh, you got Vicky Lane's. You know, and you got Fairly Wings who make some excellent wings oh, they do, located they do. in downtown Hattiesburg. So you, that's just a few names that you that I that I know off the top of my head that you can go and shop with. You know, to spend your black dollars if you wanna, as a black person, wanna follow that method. You know, when you spend your black black dollars in the black community. Yeah, you know, there's certain things that's hard to spend your your, your money, but like gas, for instance, which I did some research on that. I was trying to find out black men who own oil companies. We have some. We got some billionaires out there now okay. that are actually own oil company. Now, where they distribute their oil, who knows? But you know, that's another thing that as black people we need to tap into, so we can get a hold of that that big chunk of change, so we can have back, back to having black owned black well. My, my station is black owned. I get my gas from a black owned supplier, mm -hmm. you know, stuff like that. And, and I, I'm not sure what the greatest businesses sell, but you know, that would be, if we get more like that, then we could help, you know, shape our communities and be like the Jewish. Yeah, yeah. and, and one, one of the things that I just had a thought when you mm -hmm. brought it up, like the Black Wall Street. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Like how, what if we had over 600 businesses, yep. you know, and what, like a uh, hospital, six private planes, mm -hmm a library and all that and black people were thriving yeah, and mm -hmm. they brought it down so if we kind of get back to that and have an identity for ourselves the thing about it is i think those people back they didn't hate each other i think that's wrong with people in this generation is with black people we always hate each other there's no there's no real love yeah, right. <laughs> that's why we can't that's why we don't have black on there that's why we don't support each other because we, we always always hatred it's never you don't see other companies other Races hate their people as much as we do. Yeah, right. So that's why you know, in order to have black businesses and and have them boom, we have to trust each other and love each other. Mm -hmm. That's how I feel like about it. Because if we don't do that, then we're gonna we're gonna keep shopping at you know white owned stores. Yeah, that's true, man. It's the unity. Yeah, and like you say, we say it all the time. That is the purpose for this podcast, just to give the viewers and the listeners something to go off of. You know, we have to change the way that we treat each other. Because mm -hmm. just because I'm your brother don't mean that I'm looking for a discount or you have to side Correct. track me. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like treat me like you would treat some someone that that isn't of color. Mm -hmm. Right. You know when you go in this stuff. Yeah. Right. When when you own in a restaurant, uh, be on time. You know, yeah. with whatever with your deliveries mm -hmm. and Courteous. be courteous yes. and not rude to me. You know. You know, and don't don't discourage me. Like me, I'm not gonna black bash a uh, black restaurant or whatever mm -hmm. ever on social media. That's just not how I get down. But I see it so much when I log on. Like, oh, I tried out this say T and, and John Henry's, uh, you know, hot dog stand. Right. It and man, it was so nasty. Man, don't none y'all gonna eat there. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's nothing. We quick to bash our Wait. own our own our own people instead of. Bashing other other places, we no, we quick to bash our own. Right. Oh, uh, like you just said, you know, they, people we always want to bash. We go on social media, hey, bro. The thing is, can we go on social media and promote? Mm -hmm. Like instead of instead of degrading it, can you promote it? Yeah, promote it. Yeah, and it don't take nothing to kind of put something on your timeline or on your story or something mm -hmm. like that. That's free advertising, you know. Especially if it's somebody that you know, mm -hmm. you know. And and another thing too for the black community. With so many people, all these hustlers and stuff, why not all y'all, uh, you got a network, network of friends, put your money where your mouth is, put it together, invest it in something that's going to be prosperous and long term. So, you know, if you can get a group of guys, and that's just not for the listeners and the viewers, but for us too, you know, if, if you have a business idea, a business venture, like, you know, I kind of just... Brought the idea of tea somewhat, just in talking and just telling them how I listen and like podcasts. And lo and behold, oh, he made God. it happen, you know. So kudos to you, T. Yeah, you know, Thanks. for the younger generation being a uh, listener here. Oh, that's how you know. That's how we. But yeah, we were talking about business. You showed got a lot of business, but you ain't trying to put it out there. I know. I'm, I'm just saying. I'm just, I'm just going out there. <laughs> you want people, 
it's coming, it's coming. Yeah, it's coming. So you uh got any kind of business idea, business ventures that you wanna tap hey, into? Uh, I mean, I over the years I've had several, you know, and I mean some of them have been as wild. I, I've been in a a lot of different businesses. Um, I have we had a little music producing company. And I had spent like ten thousand. My dad passed, left me some money. So what did I do? I went and took all ten thousand dollars and bought equipment. I bought I bought mixers. I bought a whole bunch of. We started a little music group, and it lasted maybe about uh, three or four years. We went out there on the grind, you know, and and we I well. I thought, you know, hey, you just put some music together, put it out there, bam, you'll start. You know, that's a little harder than that. So, yeah, and, you know, and as, as, I, as I got older, I acquired some more talent, so some more things like barbering, some few other things. So, I, I eventually, when I get myself right, mm -hmm. in the right position and financially secure, I'm not going to say I'm going to be a millionaire, but financially secure where I can take care of my family and venture out. Yeah, I, I do want to get a barbershop. Yes. Uh, I mean, you know, and a little different. You know, I'm gonna have traveling barbers as well for the elder day. So, oh man, that's, that's one of the things that I'm looking at. You know, later down the line, doing. Yeah, yeah. But me, know. me for one, I'm gonna support. I always support black businesses. I try my best anyway. Yeah, I got a cousin right now, and I don't know if y'all ever heard of Self Made, but he's kind of making moves as far as with his uh, clothing brand, Self Made. So if y'all ever sit around or want to support. No, no doubt. Yeah, that man, I, I give you the contact. Man, okay. it, it'll hook you up, man. You looking good, looking fly. Yeah, so, you know, but uh, one, one thing that I want to kind of leapfrog back to is the uh, discrimination thing as far as run-ins with the law yeah. and stuff like that. Cause I think we was talking earlier and y'all was just discussing how some of the high profile people are sharing their stories on social media now mm -hmm. about run-ins with the law mm -hmm. and how it's just because simple simple fact that they were black. They were black, man. that was it. Yeah. Uh, I had my run-in and uh, of course everything I talk is gonna be back and I'm gonna look like 50, so <laughs> everything's gonna be like in the 90s, but that's when that my 21, you know, that era. So I'm, mm -hmm. I was traveling back and forth to uh, Norfolk, Virginia. From here, that's like a 13, 14 hour drive. I take it by myself, you know. Young, give me some coffee and a steering wheel and some some music, and I'm good. So I'm I'm going through some little town on the outside of uh, Georgia, and it's it's a hilly town. So of course, when I go up the hill, when I come down, yeah, I'm doing a little bit more than what I should be doing. But my mind's in the music, and I I got tunnel vision. I'm trying to get to Norfolk, so I, I get pulled over by uh by a cop, and he pulls me over, and uh. Walks up to the car and, and his first words to me are, boy, you know what you're doing, boy? And he spits tobacco. So, I mean, I'm 20, 21. Mm -hmm. I'm scared to death. I'm by myself. This is before cell phones. This is before pagers. <laughs> if this dude take me out and take me, nobody never going to find me. So, yeah, I'm terrified. You know, he gets me out the car and he always addressed me as boy. Every time he said anything to boy, you know, you going to do this, boy. Boy, put your hand behind your back, boy. So, he cussed me and put me in the car. I'm thinking all I did was speed, you know, I wasn't that serious. <laughs> you know, I'm terrified. So he goes through my car, he don't find nothing. He comes back out, with, boy, you, you, you're a lucky guy, I ain't find nothing in your car, boy. Uh, he uncussed me, okay, boy, look, I'm gonna get this ticket. It was a $300 some dollar ticket. Wow. And boy, you, you, you slow that thing down now, boy. And he spits it back on me, go back to his car, and then, you know, I, I drive off first, and okay. I'm good, I'm away, I'm safe. And then I start thinking about, I was just humiliated, you know. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm young, so I'm 21, but I'm, I'm not a boy. Yeah. You know, my license, I gave you said, yeah. Henry, Mr. Henry, or Johnny, yeah. or whatever. Yeah. You know, I, I'm, I'm not a boy. And, and that was just a degrading thing for me as I drove further down the road. Then, you know, it turned to anger, and because I was Man. also listening to Public Enemy and yeah. Ice Cube, yeah. NWA. Uh -huh. It was just like fueling this that, you know, how it's just done, you know. Man, that's deep, man. That's deep. Because, like you said, sometimes it's not always the case where you get beat up, but it's just the humility part. That, that, that was it. It was humility. So, before, before we close, I'm, I'm going to let you share a story or uh, whatnot if you have one to run in. But you just put something in me and sit on my heart. <laughs> man, my first run in with the law was a terrible experience as a child. They used to have a dollar movie over at the old Club of League, right? Yeah. So me and a group of, of my buddies, we used to walk over to the dollar movie. Okay, okay, it's 10 black kids, man. We were kids walking there. 
And of course, it was a fight here and there, going there. But it wasn't us. The fight probably happened way back there, but the police, he sped out the parking lot and he came. And he just saw us, we just jumped around, left him having a good time and whatnot. And uh, so he pulls up, he shines the light. They say, you know, about two or three police car, patrol cars come. They all get out with guns drawn on some 13, 12, 14 year old. Make us all lay on the asphalt, on the concrete, on spread it face down. And then they search all of us. Then they pick us up by search and ask us, y'all was back there fighting? Man, we ain't got no bruises on us or nothing like that. Right. Pushing us, telling them, well, get home, get home, you know, y'all curfew or whatever. And they're like, we get at home, like, we don't need to be poor. So, you know, it's that humility and that plays on your psyche, and that's that fear factor that you instill in, like you say, the rage and stuff like that. So, even as a young child, you grew up, like, to dislike the police and stuff right. like that. And it shouldn't be like that. So, that's one, that's the main thing. Police reform is something that we really need to tap, tap into and I that's why I say right now what's going on in the world George Floyd death will not be in vain because it's got to be some change it's got to be some change and it got to be now not tomorrow not the next day but now it's gotta, we got to get on it and, we, and, and we're getting on it I feel as if we are yeah any instances with you T? no 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 no, no. I mean I ain't got no police I mean, I got I got pulled over, but he he was like he was like kind of cool, so okay, yeah, not like, all kinds of bad guys. Yeah. I mean, I was scared though, cause that was a lot of that was a lot of police was killing people. I was shaking all that stuff, but he was he was he was like, hey, you know, you you didn't you, uh ran up, you ran past the stop sign. I was like, you really gonna pull me over for that? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he gave me a citation. He didn't even have to take. I mean, all cops are not bad, you yeah. know. I, I I tell all, you know, like that boy of mine at the house, I tell him, when you get pulled over, be sure your hands are visible where they can see your hands at all times. Because don't be, and if you got to go with something, I do this even now. If I get pulled over, I look, my wallet's in my back pocket. I'm not, can I get my wallet? I mean, I don't want to give you no excuse to pull mm -hmm. your gun and shoot me for no reason. And I'm just trying to comply with what you asked. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, we appreciate you. Thank you so yeah, much for being on oh, here, I, here, man. It, hey, man, you had a blessed mind and wild me, man. So I appreciate you yeah, I appreciate blessing us with your time, man. And uh, to our viewers, this has been Facing Reality with John Henry. Till next time. Till next time. Peace.